Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Each week at this time, the Kraft Cheese Company presents for your enjoyment Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve. Written by Leonard L. Levinson. We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But right now, here's an important message for you. Probably all of you are aware of the efforts of our government to make us a healthier, more vigorous nation by improving our diets. Yes, food, proper nutrition, is as important these days as airplanes. And that's why you should know about parquet margarine, made by Kraft. It's not only a delicious spread for bread, it's also rich in nourishing food elements your whole family needs. Of course, most people like parquet margarine because it tastes so good spread on bread, hot rolls, or toast. But health-conscious housewives also use parquet because it's a protective food of exceptionally high nutritional value. Yes, parquet margarine is one of the best energy foods you can serve. And to make its natural wholesome goodness even better for you, Kraft adds 9,000 units of vitamin A to every pound of parquet making it a reliable year-round source of this important vitamin. Why not ask your food dealer for parquet margarine tomorrow? One taste will tell you it's a superior product made to craft exacting standards of quality. Yes, you'll like its flavor and you'll like its economy, too. Just say parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. <laughs> Last week, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, Fibber McGee's next-door neighbor, left Wistful Vista to become the legal guardian of his niece and nephew, Marjorie and Leroy Forrester, in the city of Summerfield. Relaxing after a hard week's work as father, mother, and big brother to the pair, we find the great Gildersleeve explaining the finer points of baseball to Leroy. <laughs> As a result of that play, Leroy, we have a member of our team on each base. You understand? Yeah, the bags are loaded. Yeah. Come on, gang! Yahoo! Uh, now, Leroy, don't get so excited. Remember, this is only a baseball game. Leroy! Why, you robber? Uh, <laughs> as I was saying, Leroy, we mustn't give way to our emotions. No, sir, Uncle Mort. Yes. Let's remember to be sportsmen. Leroy! Get an umpire! Always give the other fellow the benefit of the doubt, Leroy. Leroy! Right three, your grandmother! Oh, shut up, you big windbag! I am not. The umpire's nothing but a horse thief. Horse thief? Hey, I'm sorry, sir, but I've warned you before. Everybody's complaining. What do you mean, everybody? I'm not complaining, am I? Hey, Jesse James, where's your horse? Uh, we can't tolerate this any longer. Now, you'll have to get out. All right, we'll get out. Come on, Leroy. We've seen this newsreel three times already anyway. <laughs> hey. Don't forget your cap. <laughs> Careful stepping on people's feet. Say, Uncle Mort, if you'll give me an advance on next week's allowance, I'll treat you to an ice cream cone. Yeah. No, thanks, Leroy. It's time we go home and fix up for that tea party your sister's giving at 5 o'clock. Oh, gee, do we have to go to be at that sissy party? Well, I'm afraid so, Leroy. Marjorie seems to think a lot of young Ted Wills. Yeah, they're stuck on each other, all right. But why drag us into it? Well, now that I'm guardian for you two, if she wants me to meet Ted's parents under the proper social circumstances. Couldn't you just bump into him someplace, like in the butcher shop? Uh, you mean meet him in the meat market? <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm afraid it's too late for that. Uh, Marjorie's worked awfully hard preparing for this afternoon, and she must be all ready by now. Come on, Leroy. Now, that's all taken care of. Oh, Bertie. Yes, Miss Marge. Will you please put the cake in the back of the pantry while I fold? Yes, ma'am. My, you sure work hard, and it sure is pretty. <laughs> That's my big surprise, and I don't want anything to happen to it. County Courthouse. Judge Hooker, please. One moment. Hooker speaking. What is it? Hello, Judge Hooker. This is Marjorie Forrester. You remember me, don't you? Well, should I? Well, of course. Just last week, you appointed my uncle as guardian for my brother and me. I did? Who is your uncle? Rock Morton P. Gildersleeve. 
Who? Gildersleeve. Two years in the state penitentiary. What? Uh, oh, I I'm in the courtroom, my dear, uh, sentencing a prisoner. What'd you call about? Oh, I'd like to have you come to tea this afternoon so you and Uncle Mort can get to be better friends. How can we get to be better friends when we hate each other's... Uh, when we hate each other to begin with? Oh, now, Judge, I planned this as a surprise for Uncle Mort. Oh, going to surprise him, eh? Mm -hmm. All right, I'll come. And when he sees me, won't all of his chins drop? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Bertie, Judge Hooker is coming. Won't Uncle Mort be pleased? And some says yes, and some says no. Oh, oh, look at the time. I'm late for my manicure appointment. Now, I'll walk as far as the store with you. I got some things to pick up. Oh, I do hope everybody will like my cake, all right. <laughs> they sure will, honey. <laughs> it's just simply scrimmage. Oh, thanks, Bertie. It's got to be good. Ted's mother is so discriminating and critical. Yes, and she keeps her nose up in the air like she ain't been introduced to what she's smelling. <laughs> Never mind, Bertie. <laughs> Let's go out the back way. It's quicker. Oh, uh, Marjorie, uh, we're back. Uh, hello, anybody home? <laughs> Leroy, I don't believe anybody's home. Doggone it, I thought we could get something to eat. It's been a long time since lunch. Yes, at least two hours. <laughs> Suppose we rummage around in the kitchen. There's bound to be something here. I usually look in the pantry first. Ah, the voice of experience. Well, here's a lot of canned goods we could open. Uh, kitchen cleanser, tennis balls, shellac, motor oil. <laughs> Just call out if there's anything you like. <laughs> Crunchy cornies. Some genuine New England chopped suey sauce. Hey, what's that in the back of the cupboard, Uncle Morris? Where? Oh, boy, a cake. Say, it's lucky you saw this. It's a honey. Looks good enough to eat. Well, then what are we waiting for? Here's a knife. Uh, one moment, Leroy. This cake hasn't been started yet. I don't think we should cut into it. Oh, it won't hurt to take one piece, Uncle Mort. Well, maybe not. But remember, just a piece a piece. Okay, here's the knife. Yeah. Thanks. Here you are. Mmm. Is, is that so? Mm. <laughs> well, excuse me while I try my piece. Uncle Mort. Yes, sir. My fine cake. <laughs> Uh, that's the end of it. Yeah, stuffy in here, isn't it? Stuffy in where? Yeah, I see what you mean. Hello, Mr. Gilsley. Oh, uh, hello, Bertie. Oh, there you are, Leroy. Messing around the kitchen for some heat, I speculate. Who, me? I don't want anything to eat. Not now. Yeah. Good. You save your appetite for the tea party. Your sister done whipped together the most delectable cake. Mm -hmm. Yes, we know of her, yes. Mm -hmm. She did it because it's important to impress Mr. Will's mother that she's a good housewife. Uh. <laughs> Look like Mr. Will's gonna get a house and a wife. Oh, I see. <laughs> uh, yes, Miss Marge worked her pretty fingers to the bone, baking all day. That's the surprise she's been talking about. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. Now, you want Take a peek at it. I'll show you. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, but she got it so beautifully redecorated. Uh, now, Bertie, uh, don't go spoiling the surprise. It ain't gonna spoil nothing. Oh, yes, it would. Leroy, isn't there something Bertie could go to the store after? After when? If... <laughs> I mean, uh, Bertie, would you mind running down to the cigar store and getting me some, uh, some uh, Punchinello Panatellas? But I got work to do. Leroy can get them. Oh, no, he's a miner. They won't sell him. I mean, uh... <laughs> Here's a dollar. Get a whole box. But, Mr. Gillespie... Hurry now, hurry. They may sell out. Remember, uh, Punchinello Panatella. Yes, sir. Hi, George. That isn't a bad name for a cigar, seeing that I just made it up. <laughs> it, oh, my goodness, Leroy. Why didn't you stop me from eating that cake? Boy, are we going to catch it when Marge gets back? Yes. Uh, what do you say we take a short walk till about bedtime? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's very good. No. No. We've got to face the consequences. Not me, Uncle Mort. I'll see you later. Come back here, young man. You don't see me running away. I'm going to stick my chin out and take it. That's not your chin sticking out, Uncle Moore. Never mind. <laughs> uh, Leroy, we've got to find some way to get an exact duplicate of that cake before that party starts. Marjorie! 
Oh, my. Who's that? That's old lady Snoop who lives next door. Oh. She's worse than an earache, Uncle Mort. I don't know the lady, Leroy, but I'm sure you're mistaken. I'll just see what Mrs. Snoop wants. No, no, Uncle, her name isn't... Ah, how do you do, Mrs. Snoop? Uh, Mrs. Snoop? Oh, uh, this is Miss Dinwiddie, Uncle. But you said... Oh, I'm so glad to meet you, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm the girl who lives next door. Yeah. Your niece, Marjorie, told me so much about you. I feel we're practically old friends. <laughs> Uncle Mort. <laughs> is, uh, is Marjorie here? Well, I... Uh, no, no, I remember seeing her go down the street half an hour ago through my front curtains. Uh... <laughs> You'd be surprised at all that I see through them. Yes... I see what you meant, Leroy. Uh, well, uh, anyway, I was looking for Marjorie, but I suppose you'll do instead. Uh, I will? Oh, uh, well, what for, Miss... Uh... Dinwiddie. Yes. Henrietta Dinwiddie. Yes. With an N, not an M. And the accent's on the witty, not on the din. What do you want me for, Miss uh, Dinwiddle? Oh, uh, you'd be surprised, Mr... Oh, I mean, I just dropped in to get a cup of sugar. Why, of course. Uh, Leroy, where's the sugar? Where's the cup? Yes. Oh, dear, imagine me. Oh, I forgot to bring one. I guess I'll just have to borrow a cup, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now, now, Mr. Gildersleeve, you'll have to excuse a poor little flustered bachelor girl. <laughs> no, Leroy, not the lump sugar, the granulated, just like I always borrow. <laughs> oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, as I was saying, it isn't often that I get to meet such a handsome man with dark curly hair and merry brown eyes. <laughs> Here's your sugar. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you, Leroy. Uh, well, it was, it was so nice being introduced to you, Mr. Gildersleeve. And don't you worry about the sugar. You'll be getting it back sooner than you expect. <laughs> oh, that old hen, she makes me sick. Me too. Yeah, and a couple of weeks ago, Marjorie showed her a picture of you, and she said you look like Ronald Coleman. Yeah. Ronald Coleman, eh? Yeah. Can you imagine that silly day? Leroy, this is a free country. A lady's entitled to her opinion. <laughs> Uh, uh, better put the sugar back. Oh, wait a minute. They use sugar in baking cakes, don't they? Sure. Leroy, I know how we can save Marjorie's party. How? Bake her another cake. But can you bake a cake, Uncle Morse? Yeah, I don't know. I never tried. <laughs> but it ought to be simple. After all, millions of women bake cakes every day. We ought to be able to do anything they can do. Yeah, what do you mean, we? I'm not going to get mixed up in no sissy proposition like that. Uh, but Leroy, there's nothing sissy about baking. Uh, look at the cowboys who bake their own sourdough bread. And the Indians grinding their own corn into corn fritters. Uh, and the cooks in the Navy making uh, sea biscuits. <laughs> well, I, I, I guess you're right. Yes, well, let's get started. Uh, should we use a cookbook or make it up as we go along? Well, it should be a cookbook in one of these drawers. Yeah. Uh, here's one right here. Uh, cooking in six easy lessons or the bride's best friend. <laughs> well, let me see now. Here's one. A mocha coca tapioca cake. Oh. Sounds too complicated. Tomato soup cake with gumdrop icing. Gee, Uncle Mort, don't they make cake out of cake anymore? Uh, I guess not. Uh, look at this picture, Leroy. Doesn't it look like the cake we ate? Yeah, Lady Baltimore cake. Yeah, that's it. Now all we got to do is copy this one. Okay, what do we do? Uh, first, uh, three cups of sifted cake flour. We got any cake flour? Nope. Here's some buckwheat flour. Well, I doubt if there's any difference. <laughs> Uh, next, uh, three teaspoons of baking powder. Uh, here's a box of baking soda. Uh, is, is it powdered? Yeah, it is. Oh, that's what they must have meant anyway. <laughs> now, uh, salt, shortening, sugar, half a cup of milk. Used all of today's milk, and yesterday's is sour. Fine. My mother always used sour milk in her cakes. It'll give it that old-fashioned sour taste. <laughs> uh, uh, teaspoon of vanilla and six egg whites. Hard boiled or poached? Uh, no, Leroy, raw. It's easier to separate the white from the yellow if they're hard boiled, Uncle Morris. Leroy, this is no picnic. Now, you sift the flour, the baking powder, and the salt together. Here, use this sifter. Okay. And I'll take the other stuff. And beat egg whites until stiff, it says. Who, me, or the eggs? Hey, hey, Uncle Morris. Uh, yes? This sifter leaks. It leaks? <laughs> Oh, oh yes, and look at the flour on the floor. Uh, get some more, Leroy. <laughs> Wait, I know how we can speed things up. We'll just dump all the ingredients in the electric mixer. Oh, that's a swell idea. Yes, it takes a man to figure out all the shortcuts in life. Uh, let's just pour everything into the bowl. There. Shall I turn on the mixer now, Uncle Lord? Yeah. Excuse me. Oh, my goodness, Bertie. She mustn't see this mess. I'll get rid of her. You stay here. Uh, 
Well, Bertie, uh, did you get me those uh, Punchinello Panatellas? Not exactly, Mr. Gillsleeve. I've been to seven stores looking for them cigars, and three of them was fresh out, whilst the other four have them in the morning. <laughs> they will, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Now I better be getting back in the kitchen. Yes. Oh, no, no. I mean, uh, I've got to have those cigars, Bertie. Oh, well, maybe after I finish my work in the kitchen. It'd be worth a dollar to me to get those cigars now. Huh? It would? Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe in that case I could... Uh, uh, what's that? Uh, I suppose it's a truck coming up the hill. <laughs> there ain't no hill around here. Sounds like my electric mixing machine in distress. I better go see. Uh, go ahead if you want to lose that three dollars. What three dollars? Uh, for bringing back those cigars. Does I get it in advance? Yeah, oh, yes. <laughs> here you are, Bertie. Uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> I'll just go on out the back way. It's quicker. No, no, no. Uh, use the front door. It's bad luck to use the back door uh, when you're buying cigars. Take your time, Bertie. Hey, goodbye. Wow. That was a close shave. Hey, Uncle Mort! Oh, sounds like the boy's in trouble. They're coming, Leroy. Hey, don't come out, Uncle Mort. Go back. I can't hear you. What's wrong with the mixer? It's throwing the cake batter all over the place. Oh, my goodness. Turn it off. I can't. I got batter in my eyes. Well, I will then. I'm not going to be intimidated by any... Oh! Get you in the kisser room? Right in the pan. Where's that switch, Leroy? Oh, watch your fingers, Uncle Mort. I think I've got it now. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh, what a mess. Here's a towel, Leroy. Wipe the cake out of your eyes. Oh, Mr. Gillespie. Oh, jumping jelly beans. There's that woman from next door again. Oh, don't let her in here, Uncle Mort. She'll blab everything to Marge. Don't worry. I'll get rid of that gargoyle. <laughs> hey, coming, Miss Dunwoody. Ah, there you are. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I bet you think I'm an awful pest. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> but I wonder if I could trouble you for an egg. Uh, an egg? Yes, an egg. Uh, chicken's hometown. <laughs> I, I know just where Marjorie keeps them, so if you don't mind... Uh, don't I'll trouble just... yourself. Uh, uh, Leroy, hand me out an egg, please. How do you want it? Hard-boiled or poached? In the shell. <laughs> Bright boy. <laughs> Lovely weather we're having, isn't it? Yes. It's perfect weather for a ride in the country. I just love to pack a picnic basket and go Here's off... Here's your egg. Uh, thanks, uh, Leroy. Yes, thanks, Leroy. Thanks very much. Uh, goodbye, Miss Dunworthy. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Did you brush her off, Hunk? No, she's walking down the steps. <laughs> uh, let's hurry with the cake. All we have to do is pour the batter into the pans. Fine, but before I mess myself up anymore, I'm going to put on Bertie's bungalow apron. Help me into it, Leroy. Oh, but gee, Uncle Mort. Hold it up higher, Leroy. Fine. Now run around the back and tie the strings. <laughs> Oop. Uh, not so tight, my boy. That's it. <laughs> you sure look funny, Uncle Mort. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Front doorbell. What kind of a house is this? Leroy, see if you can get that cake into the oven. I'm going to answer the door. Oh, but Uncle, that apron. It's all right. It's dark in the hallway. That's right. Waste the electricity. Ah, ha, ha. Good afternoon, madam. Do you sag and slump over heavy scrubbing? Uh, Have you got the dishwashing droop? Dro dro Are you proud of the shape you're in? Oh, uh, see here. <laughs> you nearsighted little nincompoop. Bad cold you have there, madam. Now, I've got a girdle here that's the answer to all your prayers. It's a gilded sleeve glamour girdle. It'll keep you in, but you'll never wear it out. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, as a special inducement, I persuaded old man Gildersleeve to cut the price of this girdle to $3.99. You persuaded old man Gildersleeve, eh? Yes, yeah, sure. You'd be surprised how palsy walsy I am with the old funny daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Why of all the... I know, but you should do something about that coal lady. Now, madam, if you'd care to try on... No, no, my... I happen to own... You already own a Gildersleeve girdle? Yes. Very good. But have you got a spare? Mister, you'd be surprised how many Gildersleeve girdles I have to spare. Good day. <laughs> of all the interruptions. How's the cake doing, Leroy? Oh, swell, Uncle Mort. It looks better every time I open the oven door. Yeah. Splendid. Now, who's that? A man can't even bake a cake around here. All right, all right, I'm coming. Now, see here, you... See what, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh. Oh, hello, Judge Hooker. <laughs> Come in. This is quite a surprise. That's what it was meant to be. What are you doing in the apron? Playing house? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very funny. No, I'm not playing house. Hey, Uncle Mort, I just took the cake out of the oven. Oh, sh... Uh... Oh, boy, does it look swell. Oh, 
Oh, hello, Judge Hooker. What are you doing here? Hello, Leroy, my boy. What have you and your uncle been up to now? Why, we've been... Uh, nothing at all, Your Honor. Leroy, time to get cleaned up. And my, look at me, I'm a mess. Yes. I'll go with you, Leroy. Uh, make yourself at home, Judgey. But I came early just to ask you two a few questions. We'll be back, Your Honor. Something funny going on around here. Smells like a cake I'm smelling. I better see what they've been doing in the kitchen. Mmm, mmm. A layer cake. Looks like it would taste good, too. I wish I wasn't on that darn diet. I'd take a piece. <laughs> Not that one piece would hurt me. I, George, I believe I will. <laughs> Good cake. I think I'll have another piece. Ah, oh, there you are, Your Honor. <coughs> uh, oh, that's a bad cough you got there. Here, let me get you a glass of water. Oh, you've been eating our nice new cake. And after I worked my fingers to the bone... Oh, my goodness, I'm getting sick. By George, you are white around the gills. That cake, that cake, I ate some. Uh, no good, eh? Uh, now, uh, my pills, pills, I left them home. You better take me there now. Oh, why did I ever take up baking? Uh, Leroy, Leroy! I better throw this cake out of the window. There. Farewell, Lady Baltimore. Oh. You want me, Uncle Mort? Yes, call me a cab, quickly. Gee, what's wrong with the judge? I've got to take him home. He's suffering from a bad attack of uh, Lady Baltimore. <laughs> Ah, what can I do for you, sir? I happen to see that big cake in your shop window. I'd like to buy it. Uh, but that's a wedding cake. Yeah, I know, but it could pass for party cake if we knock off the bride and groom. <laughs> uh, how much do you want for it? Well, I'm sorry. I couldn't sell it to you. Oh, baked it for a wedding, eh? But they'll just have to get married tomorrow. Oh, but really, mister, I couldn't let you... You couldn't, huh? Here's a $10 bill. Now do I get that cake? Well, if you insist... Never mind wrapping it. I've got a taxi outside. Just hand it here. Yeah, thanks. Now open the door, will you? Yeah. Goodbye. Oh, Mama! I just made a big sale. A man bought that wedding cake we've had in the window for the last two years. Psst. Uh, Leroy, anybody in the kitchen with you? No, come on in. Uh, Did you find a cake? Did I? Take a look. Oh, boy, that's a dilly. Not bad, eh? Who says you can't eat your cake and have it, too? <laughs> oh, Mr. Gilsley! Oh, that's Miss Dinwiddie again. Uh, Leroy, put this cake in the pantry while I answer the door. I'll strangle that old seagull. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, you must think I'm terrible running in and out all the live long day. Yes. <laughs> and borrowing things all the time. <laughs> well, uh, it's because the road to a man's heart is through his stomach. And if that's the case, why, your road, uh, it's uh, so wide. Uh, I, uh, well, I mean, I... What, do, uh, what do you want uh, this time? <laughs> oh, it's nothing, really. I, Well, I just brought you something I baked for you with my own little hands. <laughs> Cake. Well, thank you just the same, Miss Dinwitted. But I have a cake. A great, big, beautiful $10 cake. And furthermore, I'm fed up on cake. Goodbye. That takes care of that. Oh, Uncle Moore. Uh, I've been looking all over for you. Come in the living room and meet everyone. I'm about to serve the cake I baked this afternoon. A uh, cake. Oh, yes. Uh, Marjorie, there's something deep down inside of me that's weighing heavily on my conscience. What is it? <laughs> it's your cake. I ate it. But Uncle Mort... How could you? Uh, Leroy, help me. Oh, Uncle... Oh, Uncle Throckmorton, what'll I do now? Uh, don't worry, honey. I went out and got the biggest and best-looking cake money could buy. Oh, but I couldn't deceive him. It, it's all right. What they don't know won't hurt him. Now, let's go in and meet the folks, huh? Oh, there he is, Mr. Gillsleeve. Yeah, I got him for you. Uh, got what for me, Bertie? Them Punchinella Panatellas. Uh, the man, he didn't have none in stock, but he rolled them while I waited, and it cost $8 a box. Oh, my... <laughs> More expense. Well, never mind that now. Bertie, get that big cake out of the pantry and you serve it. And remember, no matter how different it looks, that's the one Miss Marjorie baked. Huh? Yeah, come on, Marjorie. Oh, yeah. Here comes I'm Mrs. Wills. Uh, Wills. Oh, Mrs. Wills, I want you to meet my uncle, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, charmed, Mrs. Wills. <laughs> Excuse me for being tardy, but I had to take home a friend who was suffering from a sick cake. I mean, a sick headache. <laughs> no, I see. Yeah. Uh, speaking of cakes, Marjorie, Ted has told me about the angel food cake you've baked. Uh, angel food? 
Well, I thought it was more of a Lady Baltimore cake, like they serve at weddings. Oh, really, Mr. Gildersleeve? They don't serve Baltimore cakes at weddings. Not even in Maryland? <laughs> well, no matter what kind of a cake Marjorie bakes, it's always delicious. Oh, now, Uncle Moore. Uh, just wait, Mrs. Wills, and you sink your teeth into this one. Ah, oh, Bertie's bringing it in now. Well, 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 oh, my, it, it looks quite professional, doesn't it? You, well, I don't believe a pastry chef could do any better. <laughs> hey, go ahead, Marjorie, you cut it. Oh, you cut the first slice, Uncle Mort. Uh? After all, if it weren't for you, we wouldn't be eating this cake. I see what you mean. Uh, <laughs> uh, give me the knife, Bertie. You. Uh, oh. Uh, Hot. Uh, well... Frosting's a little thick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dull knife. Uh, Bertie, haven't we got a sharper knife? No, Mr. Gillsleeve, but we's got an axe. <laughs> Never mind, I'll manage with this. Yeah, so, uh, oh, careful, Uncle Morton! Slip off the table! What? Oh, my goodness, it's made out of plaster of Paris. Oh, oh. <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a minute. But first, I want to tell you something that should make every quality-wise and economy-minded housewife want to try parquet margarine first thing tomorrow. Here it is. Now you can have a high-quality product made by Kraft that's so downright good as a spread for bread, toast, or rolls that you'll want to use it lavishly as a seasoning for hot vegetables, a shortening for baking and for pan frying, too. Yes, that quality Kraft product is parquet margarine. It tastes so good that you'll want to use lots of it at the table and for cooking. And it costs so little, you can use all you want without being extravagant at all. Yes, use all you want for baking. Remember, parquet is a real flavor shortening that makes better tasting cakes and cookies. Here's what one user says about parquet margarine. I'll read you a few lines from a letter from Mrs. Emma Hartman of Cave Town, Maryland. Now, we didn't ask Mrs. Hartman for this letter. She was so enthusiastic about parquet, she just had to tell us about it. Quote, I would like to tell you how well I like parquet. I use it for everything I want to be especially nice because of fine flavor, unquote. You see, the secret of parquet's popularity is its delicious flavor. And housewives with an eye to food value like it because it's such a nourishing energy food that contains plenty of vitamin A. Yes, every pound of parquet margarine contains 9,000 units of vitamin A. So you know it's not only good tasting, but good for you, too. Dinwiddie. Yes? Oh, you're angry. You took me seriously when, you, when I was just kidding. Well, really, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, that cake you baked for me. Uh, some people just dropped in at our place, and that cake would just about save the day for me, Angel, a uh, cake. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, it would? Yeah. Oh, well, then, take it. Uh, by, by all means. Oh, Miss Dinwiddie, you're an angel. I'm so happy I could kiss you. Oh, oh, oh Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, uh, that is, I... I didn't quite mean. Uh, it was so nice of you. Say, where are you going? In to bake you another cake. Oh, my. Oh. Good night. <laughs> Original music was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week at this same time for the further adventures of The Great Gilders. This is the National Broadcasting Company.